Regular activity is so crucial in every stage of life, but there's a point where health mantras of going hard at the gym, killing your workouts, and hashtag no rest days actually become unhealthy for you. And as we exit our 40s and get into our 50s, 60s, and beyond, the new mantra needs to shift to one of preservation if aging better is important to you. Hi, I'm Harry of Real Nutrition MD. Regaining your health and managing disease don't always require medical intervention. The human body actually does most of the healing, we just need to put it in a position to do that. So what I like to do here is focus on realistic approaches that you can do right now to boost your quality of life through nutrition and other health strategies. If that's the kind of stuff you're into, hit like, subscribe, spread the word. Starting around the age of 40, the average person loses about 1% of muscle mass each year. By the time we reach 70, a lot of us might be working with just half the muscle we used to have in our 20s. The medical terminology is sarcopenia. Age-related muscle wasting is natural, but it's completely possible to delay its onset so we don't feel old and decrepit prematurely. As long as you stay active and feed your body appropriately, it's something you don't have to worry too much about until you start approaching 50 years or older, give or take. You might have seen or even experienced it firsthand. For example, your parents probably looked pretty much the same for decades, but the instant they became senior citizen age, physical changes were pretty noticeable. Sure, hormone changes factor in, but a lot of it has to do with this sarcopenia. Muscle is the most abundant metabolically active tissue, so when it disappears, our metabolism drops and our body composition can change dramatically. You might be thinking, hey, it's just muscle. I'm not gonna be doing much when I'm that age anyway. Muscle loss leads to frailty, and everyone that's aging should wanna prevent this. It's what makes us feel older, slower, and more rickety. Weak bones means you increase injury risk. No strength means you can't do activities of daily living. Recovery becomes difficult and slower, so you're sidelined longer. And then it creates a downward spiral of doing less and less losing even more muscle. Also, sarcopenia can attribute to mental deterioration. The latest research shows the correlation of an inactive lifestyle to early cognitive decline. A study published in April 2022 by the American Academy of Neurology shows that regular exercise protects brain cells. And more specifically, physical activity improves cognitive function by reducing BMI and improving insulin metabolism, which can limit the rate of brain volume loss, a known risk factor for dementia. Muscle maintenance has to be a priority if you wanna to continue to do everyday things you might take for granted. Things like walk to your favorite cafe, lift a hose to water your garden, move storage boxes in your garage, play with your grandkids, get in and out of your vehicle, open an Amazon package, really just anything physical. So hitting it hard at the gym is the answer to prevent this, right? No. We need to look at our physical activity in a different way as we age. We want to protect what we have. It's less about exertion and more about frequency. And the key to aging well is just to be active every chance you get. So how do you start adopting a preservation mindset? Limit the activity and increase the amount. For example, a very well-maintained classic car can run great. It can even serve as a daily commuter, but that definitely won't be the case if you're constantly driving it to its max hitting red line. Chasing gains and working to complete failure or exhaustion, especially when we're aging, becomes risky business. We start to collect lots of injuries, so the body is in a constant state of repair. Aches and pains increase from the movements, keeping you in an inflammatory state. And it can even lead to habitual popping of pain relievers. We need to learn to not only listen to our body, but to take action when any alarm sounds. If you feel even the slightest inkling of pain, that's your cue to back off and recover. Don't wait until it grows into a full-blown injury. 
Working through the pain is counterproductive when it comes to aging well. It's about smartly working around it. We can still do the exercises we know and love, but we have to also focus on the movements that protect areas prone to injury. Things like rotator cuff exercises for our shoulders or core stabilization for our back issues. And when we exercise, we have to focus on maintaining the strength we have through things like compound movements that activate multiple muscle groups. We should also start practices that promote mobility, activities that make joints move through a full range of motion. So what if you've been inactive for quite some time? Well, this is an opportunity now to introduce some physical activity, no matter how little. Consider this. The body gets better at whatever we do or don't do. If you don't move, your body will make you better at not moving. If you do move, your body will allow for more movement. Like I said before, the key isn't the intensity of activity, it's the frequency. So even if it's just a little bit, do it every chance you get. Here are three things to consider when it comes to building a physical regimen that's preservation focused. Try alternatives to strength training that still provide resistance without the dangers of heavy free weights. Try grabbing the lighter weights. Varying tension times and increasing rep ranges can increase the intensity. Experiment with resistance bands or machines to help assist. Use body weight and incorporate movements you do daily, like walking with a load for example. Incorporate lower impact practices like yoga or tai chi. Start incorporating things that increase blood flow. It moves oxygen through our systems and promotes muscular pliability and release. Things like hiking, biking, swimming, regular walks, massages, saunas or hot tub soaks, to name a few. You can't ignore nutrition, so let's discuss the need to feed your body with quality protein. This is a non-negotiable component when it comes to preserving lean tissue and ultimately maintaining your strength and mobility and endurance. As you approach senior age, muscle mass takes a sharp decline if you're not diligent in increasing your intake. This drops your metabolic rate, decreases hunger, and leads to even less protein intake. How much protein is dependent on how balanced you're eating right now but a good starting point is to take half of your weight in pounds and eat that many grams of protein. This estimate is in alignment with current health recommendations, but I consider this the very bare minimum for health. If the goal is muscle and strength preservation, much of the latest literature points to much higher numbers, 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And even some compelling studies recommend one gram per pound and this is actually something I advise with all my patients, 60 years old and older, and I get much positive results. This calculation doesn't work too well with the clinically obese, which I would then recommend aiming for one gram of protein per pound of lean mass. Every cell in our body is made of protein, so you shouldn't be scared to increase it, especially when you have an aging body that's experiencing a steady decline of it. This can be met by prioritizing four to six ounces of any protein source every time you have a meal. And that's around 20 to 40 grams. Getting old is inevitable, but it doesn't have to go hand in hand with a deteriorating body in mind. And it all starts with just not being sedentary. So what's my mantra for staying strong as I'm starting to age? Well, let's just say I focus on maintaining my strength versus always testing its limits. So adopt this preservation mindset and you'll stay strong and agile to do the things you love for much, much longer. Till next time.